Acock 45 here. What are we looking at here? Oh man, is that a Winchester Model 70? I don't think so. I believe it's an AK-47 or an AKM or something of that variety. You know, maybe it's a Type 56. Chinese Type 56. That's it. That's the ticket. That's what we have here. The Chinese Type 56, okay? And this would be a later version of it. Uh, the early ones had the milled receiver. Of course, they were a copy of the Russian AK-47, the third generation of that, the latest. The, their, when they finally perfected the AK-47, I guess, with the milled receiver, uh, Type 3, uh, the Chinese copied it for their uh, Type 56, the first version of it, of course. Now, this is a later. This is a uh, you know, stamped receiver uh, meant to be semi-auto when it was made and then converted, okay? So I don't want to confuse anybody. Okay, this is a later version, made probably early 80s. Uh, in fact, it, it does say it's not an AKS-762. It is called the AK-47S. So I, I think it's probably an earlier semi-auto version that came into this country at Woodland Hills, California, and it was converted, okay? Legally, of course, the SEER is what is numbered on this baby, uh, serial numbered, all right? That's the serial number that, that is important to this firearm. And so uh, you've maybe seen it. I've talked about it a little bit here and there. I thought we'd bring it out and let you see what it's all about. Take a few shots. Let's just take a couple shots. You want to? All right, see if it works. It's been working. Oh, uh, it's pumpkin season. So, uh, you know, we might shoot a couple of pumpkins. They don't blow up, but they're fun to shoot, right? Now, I know you'd rather I shoot at uh, semi-auto, right? You know, like this. <laughs> nah, let's go full auto. Now I'll probably hit the stomp and it'll fall and everything else. I don't want to hit that uh, steel back there, so I'll just put a few on it quickly here. <laughs> there he goes. You see him trying to get away? I'll tell you what, let's go to semi-auto and see if we can get anything semi-auto. Like that red plate over there. How about the one on the, well, that black plate? Hit some dust. There we go. Let's bring it up just a hair. How about a two liter right here? <laughs> nice, nice. All right, just wanted you to see it does have semi-automatic capability. Let's put it back on the uh, fun switch and uh, it's probably about empty. Yeah, what did I tell you? You always have to check with an AK because generally speaking, the bolt doesn't stay back. Uh, there are some magazines that will hold uh, bolts back, but I, you know, I think I have one of those, one of those around here somewhere. So uh, yeah, this is uh, an AK, as if you didn't know. The Chinese, AKS or AK-47S, all right? But very much like the others you've seen here, and you see around the Chinese AK, like the AKS 762, you know, it's the same thing basically, okay, with a stamped, you know, receiver, like the AKM, you know, went through the Russian AKM, uh, stamped receiver firearms. Now, again, the, the Chinese stamped receiver firearms, though, they, they had a 1.5 to 1.6 uh, millimeter uh, stamping, you know, metal in their uh, stamped firearms, so thicker. The uh, the Russian ones were like what, one, just one uh, millimeter, and uh, so these were thicker, the uh, heavier metal in the stamped receivers of the Chinese guns when they went to a stamped receiver. All right, so here it is, and career for you. So, can I shoot the thing? Yeah. I might shoot it again. Let's take this empty mag out. These are Chinese mag, uh, metal mags, you know, got some of those. I actually prefer the, you know, the Bulgarian mags, of course, uh, Circle 10s. Uh, they're just like the, probably the best mags, AK mags on the planet, you think? A lot of people do, I don't know. And, uh, but sometimes they don't fit as well in, in other AKs, but uh, most of these fit all right. I've had a couple I tried that seemed a little too tight. Uh, so there it is, man. Uh, 
uh, <laughs> and, and so for those who follow the channel closely you know again this is a registered sear and the sear is what's serial numbered and uh we were toying with uh putting that having that in my uh my sam 7 you know sam 7 arsenal of course as some of you, you know and uh, some research and talking to some real experts who, who, who know the business uh, really well that uh, it just wasn't going to be able to take possession of that. The, you know, it's just too many uh, gray areas with that. You're know, moving the sear to, to that and actually taking possession of it. And kind of went back to plan A and uh, got my Chinese gun that I waited so long for uh, over a year really to, to, to take delivery on it. So, uh, but that's just the process you go through. And uh, it's, you know, it takes time. Uh, and depending on where it's coming from, if it's having to go through uh, one or two people and all that kind of thing. But, you know, it got to do it legally, at least I do. And, uh, and, and, you know, you just have to wait. And, uh, and I was gonna say, I get a question a lot of times, you know, in videos where we're shooting something like this. Wow, is that illegal? Is that legal? <laughs> yeah. An interesting question to ask somebody doing a video with a firearm, right? But uh, yes, yeah, certainly it's legal. Uh, there are almost 200,000 of these in civilian hands, not a case necessarily, but just machine guns, submachine guns, all right? These kinds of things, almost 200,000, all right? Legally owned, and rarely, almost never, a crime committed with them, all right? The stats are out there. Uh, so for folks who just this is like blows your mind because you're not really uh, uh, you haven't been exposed to firearms much you're just now getting into it and you know, you're from another country uh, yeah yeah I think it's over 180,000 of these and uh, people shoot them enjoy them take them to the ranges collect them World War II uh, just whatever they might be okay and you can research that and find out the laws and, and how all that works and why they're so expensive okay so uh, yeah, this is the type, you know, I have the, you saw recently the video of my semi-automatic uh, spiker and, uh, you know, very, very similar, you know, you got the, uh, the cool attached bayonet like that on the hinge and uh, that is one of the, the, the dead giveaways that you've got a Type 56, a Chinese Type 56, that is one of the most distinguishing features maybe, of the, and I, all of them don't have it, but I think probably most do. And when you see Vietnam footage or whatever, uh, you know, it, not just Vietnam War footage, but footage from all kinds of uh, battles and wars, you know, around the, the globe, these are very recognizable. And they're also just prolific. They were used by so, they're still used by so many countries. The Chinese sold so many of them, both, of course, full auto and then, of course, semi-automatic versions to this country. But uh, very distinguishable. Usually the lighter colored stocks and everything and the, the folding bayonet. And there's, there are other things that kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the totally enclosed hood on the front sight. Most of the others don't have that, the Russian AKs and everything. And, and on the uh, stamp models, the later models, like of the AKM, they moved the, uh, the gas ports up here. So you still got the gas ports on the tube there on the Chinese. They kept that even, even on the stamp models. Uh, things like that but they're very very they're very uh i think identifiable to most people that are familiar with them and uh pretty cool so again this one's a little bit of a hybrid it's not a, an actual original like chinese ak 40 well type 56 from from 56 57 or anything like that it's a later one that was converted uh, okay stamp model uh so semi-automatic came to this country probably early 80s somebody converted it you know legally and uh, and here it is okay registered sear so pretty cool and uh just just interesting part can i shoot it again and we'll tell you a little bit more about it you know what we've got a couple of things here to shoot we want to have some fun and uh <laughs> shoot some things full auto i mean why not this is sort of the uh the debut of this baby uh in an actual little video this, uh, some, somehow those water jugs just happen to show up and they need to be addressed. Full auto's in the middle, so why don't we just do full auto, all right? Yeah, let's lean into this thing and... <laughs> 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 uh, 
All right, and we'll double check. Yep, she's empty. Seems to work pretty well. Now some of the, uh, or a lot of the AKMs, the Russian AKMs, had a rate reducer in them. And this one had one initially, it actually broke. Uh, but I, as I understand from my research, the Chinese AKs really didn't have the rate reducers in them. And uh, they just went with a little bit faster cycle rate. And uh, they felt like they were not fragile, you know, with the thicker uh, stampings and everything. I might have been part of it, I don't know. So. I'm not going to tell you everything you need to know or want to know about AKs, of course. There's a billion uh, articles and books and videos on them. Uh, now, th the thing about the Chinese was they kind of did their own thing. They copied, you know, they're experts at copying things, right? They did, it, it, with their permission, the Russians worked together. They, uh, let, they copied the Russian original Type 3 AK-47, as I understand, of course. And uh, so, so those are very much, you know, like the Russian AKs. Now, when Russia changed to like the, the stamps, you know, the AKM, and in China, same thing, went through the stampings like this one. Uh, China didn't change things. They, I think by that time, they were a little falling out with, with the Soviet Union Russia, but they, they, uh, they didn't change everything. They went to stampings, but they retained like the, uh, well, the kind of the flat hand guard, uh, the gas ports being, you know, on the, right here on the tube, uh, a heavy barrel. The, the barrels are a little heavier in the Chinese versions, uh, even, uh, you know, they're more like the original AK-47 barrels. They're still a little heavier, whereas the AKM, as I understand, has a little bit lighter barrel. Uh, you retain the smooth uh, cover there. The grips, they kept the, the wooden grip, the ferrule there, kind of like the original AK-47. So you've got kind of a mix here of the original AK-47 Type 3, I guess, and the AKM. You know, and then whatever China wanted to do with it. And uh, you know, like the enclosed front sight globe there, the, the bayonet, uh, you know. Of course, all that said, an AK is kind of an AK. <laughs> There's not a lot of difference. It's like a 1911. We can argue, can lay a couple on the table. You, eh, a couple of 1911s. Well, one of them's actually a 1911A1, right? Might even be a nine millimeter, you know, or one that was made yesterday. And then you've got one on the table that was made 1912. And at glance and picking them up, okay, they're both 1911s, but you know, they have different features and different, uh, different things that have been added to them over the years, perhaps. Which reminds me again, uh, too, you know, these are legal in most states. I think it's pretty much the same, about 40 states, 42, whatever the number is, uh, where you can buy a suppressor. I think it's about the same for a machine gun. Okay? Again, speaking to folks who are just, uh, you know, not familiar with this at all and are still shocked when they see somebody shooting something like this, like me. You're probably shocked at seeing me, period, right? But uh, yeah, they're perfectly legal. Uh, you know, they uh, might look evil to you. You might consider it evil because it shoots so fast. Uh, well, yeah, my, my car will go 120 or 30 miles an hour. So what, you know, I'm not gonna drive it that fast probably, especially through town, right? So that's what these are. They're, they're interesting pieces of history. They're fun to shoot on the range and experience that. And just because you want one of these or an AR uh, M16 or an Uzi or whatever doesn't you know, make you some evil person, of course, duh. It, uh, so there's, like I said, there's almost 200,000 of these, these types of things out there. All right, just wanted to point that out. And uh, I hope you appreciate that, right? So uh, it's simply or it's full. It's whatever you want. Let's, I'll tell you what let's do. We've got a couple of cinder blocks down there. Let's shoot those if you want to. And I'm not going to try to destroy them. Uh, things are getting warm, I tell you what. The barrel gets hot. I might do some bursts on this guy. I don't want to get too close, and uh, I don't want to shoot the, the steel either. Maybe over here is a better angle. Okay, I'll just do some bursts on him. All right. Well, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's do it semi-auto. Oh, well, <laughs> that was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> I don't know, give me a little full auto. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Hey, pumpkin, how about you? 
Oh no, we've got a pot here that needs to be hit. Full auto. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I just gave you an object lesson why you don't need full auto, right? But I thought one bullet would you wouldn't even notice I hit them. They were actually, I think, ready to fall over, which part of the problem there. Uh, that was funny. You never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, man. These are the metal metal mags that just seem to be more appropriate, you know, for this. Uh I'll leave cool a second. The uh so, you know, these are interesting firearms. Like I said, uh, if you've seen any Vietnam footage, uh, that's what you see. You see uh, the North Vietnamese, he's carrying these with the bayonet, you know, uh, that bayonet, that spike bayonet. In other places, it, uh, ironically, later, I guess in the 80s, when uh, the Chinese and the North Vietnamese were not friends, then uh, they were at war uh, battle. You had these, these firearms on both sides fighting against each other, the same with the Iraq-Iran war. So around the globe, this is one of the most common uh, AKs, Type 56 is <laughs> out there. Yeah. Of course, uh, for some of you, you may have a, a Chinese SKS, it's called the Type 56 as well, right? Yeah, it's because it's the year 1956. But uh, just used globally, uh, so prolific, I think I read that there were around the estimated like 15 million maybe of these things made and it's hard to uh, you get exact numbers on on things like this of course they're made by so many people AKs and licensed by so many and you might notice I uh I notice this screw loosens on me back here just want to make sure to keep that tight uh so just widely widely used uh, I think uh, of the specifics of the gun you know, there's probably other things I should point out that I haven't thought of but uh, not, uh, and I've done some refinish work on this. I refinished the stock and uh, re did some replacement of the wood uh, with original. It's original wood. And uh, oh, what is it? And I, and I re shellacked it. It is, uh, I did some research and found that the they used amber shellac. Yeah, amber shellac, which you can buy at your local hardware store. I walked into one here in Tennessee and asked for it and found it. And uh, they thought when I was asking for amber shellac, I was looking for a pole dancer or something. You know, it sounds like that kind of name, but, but it, it is, and it, you get the same finish. So it's, it's, it's good stuff. Uh, I guess it's good stuff, but I wanted the same finish, the original finish that, that they used. And, uh, and there you go. And of course for AKs, people make different, uh, you can get different wood for it, different, uh, some beautiful hand guards. If there is such a thing as anything you could call beautiful on an AK, <laughs> I mean, I have to admit, it's like a Glock or something. There's not a lot that's uh, aesthetically you know, gorgeous about an AK, maybe, other than like a Glock or many other pistols, firearms, in its function, so reliable and just purely functional, then there's a certain amount of beauty in that, right? So anyway, there it is. Maybe the most recognizable firearm, or one of them, probably the most recognizable firearm. <laughs> well, there I go. Uh, there we go, most recognizable firearm on the planet, Earth, possibly, yep. the AK. So it's cool being able to shoot one that's actually uh, like real, right? All right, what do we, oh, we got some things down here. Why don't we go down there? You know what we ought to do, since this might be our last big explosion. Or where there it is. We'll cheat a little bit and use a Bulgarian magazine because it holds a few more. Alright, let's go down here. Let's see watermelons. These might be the last watermelons of the season. Alright. So for those of you who don't know firearms very well, you know, when you put the magazine in, you're still pretty safe because there's nothing in the chamber, right? Until you do this. Yeah, now you have a round in the chamber. All right. Now, the pumpkins won't do much, but we'll shoot them anyway. <laughs> Oop, there he goes. <laughs> wow, don't tell me. Wow. There you go, full auto. Now, you movie buffs, when you see somebody firing full auto, AK or anything, uh, 
they just seem to shoot for a long time, don't they? Well, not so much in the real world. You know, not so much in the real world. <laughs> oh man, got her nice and warm. Yeah, I wanted to show off a little bit with the uh, uh, semi-auto uh, accuracy, but just before the video, I told John, I said, well, let me take a couple shots here. here. And was popping all the red plates, you know, first shot and everything. Uh, so it, it's not a, you know, it's not just a full auto firearm. It's actually a, a rifle, a good rifle that fires an interesting little round. I've pointed out before in our videos, you know, the uh, 762 by 39 is, is a nice round. Comparable ballistically, maybe to a 30 30 is always compared to, but it's, uh, you know, it's a 30 caliber and it's a, it's not a 308 or a 30 out six, but it's got some punch, you know, got some real punch, but it's con fairly controllable. Uh, in, in this firearm, it's fairly controllable. It, it's a little frisky, a little frisky, no doubt about it. So what else about the history did I not tell you that, uh, well, like everything, uh, you know, the, the Russian, of course, AKs are, they're famous for, you know, coming up with that Kalashnikov and, uh, uh, just the reliability of them. There's so many arguments about them versus like the M16, AR-15, which is better, which is more reliable and all that, which would you rather have, which is more accurate and all those sorts of things and arguments. Um, so, you know, a lot of people have spent a lot of time arguing about which to, to own or buy. I don't argue a lot, I just got them both, you know, like a lot of people do, because they're both a lot of fun to shoot. Now, if I were going to war tomorrow, then I'd have to make that decision. Yep. And these, these are a little heavier, of course, and uh, maybe not as much upside potential in terms of accuracy, you know, different things you can hang on them easily, you know, as, as with an AR. Uh, but both are great uh, platforms, really, and uh, 1947 goes back a ways, doesn't it? So kind of old technology, but it still works and still used all around the planet. It really is. Uh, I, I feel like there was something else. I'll shoot just a little more since we have you here uh, that I wanted to tell you. Uh, yeah, but boy, one thing, I, the, one of these imports like this uh, was uh, used in Stockton, California, and it's uh, it led to the uh, import ban in uh, 89. And that's one reason even the semi-automatic versions of these are so, so expensive because uh, they just imported these fine Chinese AKs for, what was it, sometime in the early 80s, I guess they started coming in. But I don't know that many of them were here before the mid or later 80s because it just wasn't an AK buying public for one thing, as I've mentioned before. You know, in the 70s, as I was getting into shooting and collecting guns and competing and everything, and it was really, just like a lot of you, just really, uh, I wanted to eat up with uh, the hobby and uh, trading and shooting. I never saw AKs around, you know, or these rounds of ammo. I, it, was, it was like a mystery, this, this mystery gun and bullet that uh, was used in the Soviet Union. It really was, and at least to me, I think to most people. I remember a guy in a gun shop had one of the rounds one day, I don't know what year it was, sometime in the 70s, and he pulled that thing out, and man, it was like a, a gold coin. Everybody wanted to look at it and see it, you know? So uh, maybe it's because it was Tennessee. We're backwards, we don't know anything, I don't know. But uh, they just weren't around much. Uh, interesting, interesting firearms, though, with so much history and uh, world history. Uh, it's, so it's cool. One of the cool things about the hobby, again, and now it's very expensive to get into one of these. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but it's 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 cool to uh, to be able to experience these pieces of history. It really is. And you want to be sure you don't burn yourself on this piece of history. And again, that is one of the coolest bayonets I think. And just like just like the SKS, uh, you know, where it folds out. And with that, you are ready, aren't you? You are ready. You are. Have I shot the paper yet? You think I should stab the paper? I don't know. I might or might not. Let's put a couple on the paper. And guess what? We've got a two liter or two that's not been addressed. And I think I'm going to put it on semi-auto and go over there. 
and hit that red plate again. If I even change my point of impact with that hot barrel. There we go. Yeah. That felt good. How about these two liters? Like right. Rolling pins. Woo! <laughs> so it's fun, whether semi or full. Ring a ding ding. All right, let's go on the paper here. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So the old AK is uh. It's a little jumpier than an M16 if you've ever fired anything full auto in, in 5.56. Uh, but if you've done that, you've probably fired one of these too. But you gotta, you got to be ready for it when you pull the trigger. But they're pretty controllable. They are. So a piece of history, uh, again, even though this one's a bit of a hybrid, you know, again, the stamp one came out in the 80s, semi-automatic, converted. But, uh, you know, the cool thing about these, these Chinese stamped uh, one of the cool things the stamped guns is that they were built so well uh nice heavy stampings and with a again whether you want to believe it or not the chinese have an incredible reputation for building some of the highest quality ak's ever made and uh it, for one thing they when they started marketing their semi-automatic uh, firearms to the world, to the United States, I guess mainly the semi-automatic ones in the 80s. They, they just, uh, I, some of you may know more about this than I do. I think I've read that, I mean, it's basically they just took them off the main line. They were just the, where they make them for the military, for their country and others. And they just did what they had to do to make them semi-automatic, put them out the back, that door instead of that, that door. Or put them in this crate instead of that crate. This crate, you know, crate. that they did what they had to do to make sure they were just semi-auto, shipped them out. But it's all the same procedures, the same guns, other than the selector switch, right, and the full auto capability. So it wasn't like they had different factories. There may have been some of that too, but from what I've read, it's as I said. And so you've got basically the same firearm that uh, they were using in their military and other countries they were selling to, except in semi-automatic form, not a substandard version of their, their firearms, okay? So, I don't want to scare you too much here with that bayonet. So anyway, my Type 56, uh, glad to have it. I haven't shot a whole lot, but it's a, it's a pretty cool piece of history and an interesting firearm. And it really is. Glad you came out tonight to, to enjoy it with me. I really am. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastol.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.